different information in them. And so for you to be able to master that time and space requires that you take information in your body through the food from that particular area, okay? So if you're in Africa, the macrobiotic diet is going to be different. If you're in Alaska, the macrobiotic diet is going to be different. I don't find unless there are Africans or Africans here in America that come from ancestry that has lived in areas where, for example, rice was a main stable, that we really digest that very well. And I think that that's one reason why so many Africans in, here in America like white rice, because anybody can digest that. It's adulterated, it's just pure glue, okay? But when you give them brown rice, many of them will find that it gives them gas, as opposed to eating other grains that are more in alignment with what's in Africa. You know, corn, millet, sarba, okay? But that's not something that grows here all of the time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So uh, that's why I prescribe the macrobiotic diet because it allows an individual to have mastery over the environment that they live in most of the time because they're eating local foods. Ayurveda, as you know, comes from Eastern India. And the plants that they use are spices. Okay, spices don't grow here. And so therefore, if there's a medicinal reason to treat, if there's a medicinal problem, you'd have to then ask them to go and buy something that would be important, that has information about a time and space that they don't even exist in. And so therefore, I don't use Ayurvedic remedies and Ayurvedic foods because they don't even grow where we live. So if I was in India, then that's the system that I would use. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We need low-fat diets. Could you speak more on the types of diets, what we should have in our diet, which is good for us and what is not bad for us? And could you also speak on herbs, how that relates to us and what we should or should not be taking? Um, the African body is not created to digest high concentrations of fat and protein, okay? In most food sources, the only way you get concentrated fat and protein is when you eat animal flesh. And so the African is not designed to eat flesh. And if in the species of African, there is a individual that would eat flesh, it would be the male, not the female. Okay, one of the greatest travesties on a social level that has happened to Africans in America is the eating of flesh by the African woman. And when the African woman is willing to stop eating flesh, she will actually begin to have a victory in her own home, in her own community, and most of all, a reunion with her man. And the reason why is because the concentrated protein and fat creates what we call an androgenic reaction in the woman. It actually produces an increase of testosterone. So therefore, her whole magnetism changes to one of electric. So it becomes the same as the man, okay? So therefore, many men will tell you that in the presence of an African woman, it's like being with another man. So they don't have any problems busting us upside the head with their fists and the whole bit because we don't have any problems jumping up in their chest like we are like them. And it's a whole identity confusion that comes about because of a biological, chemical, abnormality because of improper diet, okay? So she is not created to tolerate high concentrations of animal fat and protein because it produces an androgenic reaction. See, the highest level of testosterone in the human race is in the African man. And then the second highest level of testosterone in the human race is in the African woman. Do you understand that? Is that I have more testosterone than most white men, Asian men, Indian men, okay, and I don't have to do very much at all to bust out with sideburns and a beard and a mustache, etc. through my diet, which is why there's so many African women that have that, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying my muscle mass automatically is eight times more than a Caucasian, ten times more bone mass, etc. As a woman, do you understand what I'm saying? So this is why I'm saying that, therefore, it's very crucial that the African woman has to refrain from eating those foods in high concentration, okay? Now, 
because of what protein does. Protein is an ego builder. Okay, on a metaphysical level, protein builds ego. And so if anybody is to have ego, it should be the man because he's the one that has to go out into the world and choreograph the life force energy that he receives from us, right? So that means he has to have some tenacity, he has to have some arrogance, he has to have some courage to go out there and do what he has to do because he can't come back with an empty hand to me if he's taking my life force energy, okay? So that's, for, that's why he has to eat more protein. Now, when a woman eats more protein, it actually makes her ovaries hard and rubbery. And that is where the life force energy emanates, from the pelvis. So when her pelvis becomes full of tumors and her ovaries become rubbery, her life force energy diminishes. And you see that everywhere she goes because there's nothing that is imbuing life. Everything is raggedy, old, peeling, kicked to the side, full of trash and garbage. And you know that if there's women that are living there, they have a sick pelvis. I guarantee you. A woman whose ovaries are kicking and her uterus is nice and soft like it's supposed to be, I don't care how little her stuff is, it's gorgeous. Because she can't help but do that because she is actually a walking vessel that contains life force energy. I don't care whether she's a doctor who is a vessel of life force or a secretary who's a vessel of life force or a homemaker who's a vessel of life force. Wherever she is, it's supposed to be imminent and full of life force energy. So when there are females in environments and there's nothing living and everything is ruined and not fixed up, it's because she has a reproductive imbalance that is causing her or a psychological state that is causing her to shut down and not release that energy. That's why it's so crucial for us. Okay, now, obviously, what are we supposed to be eating? Well, for women, they definitely need foods that keep them open and expansive. So leaves that are open and expansive, flowers, okay, which are in the forms of fruits, but only fruits in season and only fruits where you live. Do you understand what I'm saying? So therefore, you don't sit up in the wintertime and eat watermelon and cantaloupe, okay? And these things only come in season in late July and October. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying that therefore, dark green leafy vegetables, grains in season, okay, and those kind of foods are very much complementary to the African woman. And when she eats those, all kind of wonderful things happen. Okay, next. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't say too much about sickle cell because um, I'm just healing over that, really, a personal healing. Because when I began to look at the campaign that was put forth in the late 60s, uh, the little monies that were put together to have these little buses go in our community to draw our blood out, it was actually for genetic research. It was not to actually elucidate any type cure for sickle cell because it was understood that it was not a disease. It is actually an environmental adaptation. And so in those areas in Africa where it was very moist and swampy, where mosquitoes reigned, that the red blood cell took on a different shape so that it could actually exist with this particular bacteria in the bloodstream and not allow the individual to die, okay? Now, sickle cell is not a problem anywhere in the world if the individual eats a diet that is respectful of their body. One of the worst things that Africans with sickle cell trait or sickle cell disease can do is begin to eat sugar. When you give sickle cell trait, sickle cell individual sugar, I mean, I, I, somebody was even telling me that they give them Gatorade. I was astounded in the hospital because this person is going to crisis, 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 onto the grave. You cannot.